Hey y'all, hope you're doing good today. Um, so I actually am trying to, um, I guess you might say recalibrate um, or um, just kind of introspect and pause and examine um, the way I have everything structured in my life right now. And so um, I, I do plan on continuing my channel. I really enjoy it. I hope you do too. Um, and um, But I may be posting at different times of the day. So um, I'm finding it a little bit um, better suited for me to film later in the day. So um, just know it's still my intention to, you know, post... Um, Ideally, three or four videos a week, but some weeks there may only be two, but I will um, be bringing you something uh, unless otherwise um, disclosed, right? So um, I'm never just going to like ghost you and leave you hanging on, just like wondering what's going on. So I'll let you know if um, <laughs> if things get too crazy, right? And I can't um, film for a while. But um, let me open by sharing a little quote from this book. I've shared this book with you all before. It's pretty cool. So um, great quotes from great leaders. And um, the quote is going to be from George Washington. And it says, Labor to keep alive in your breast that little spark of celestial fire called conscience. Conscience, right? So, um, yes, I looked up the definition of conscience from um, the Oxford Languages website online. And it says an inner feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide to the rightness or wrongness of one's behavior. And I want us to take a look at this a little bit different. <coughs> excuse me, than uh, what you may be perceiving um, the definition of conscience just on your own. Um, it, I, I'll share with you kind of where I'm going with this. So like prior to looking at that definition, my understanding of conscience um, has always been um, essentially like, you know, your, your inner... <laughs> Um, feelings that tell you, you know, what's right and what's wrong, you know, having a conscience, knowing what's right and what's wrong, knowing the difference, and then acting from what you know to be right and true and good, right, versus, you know, someone who we would say doesn't seem to have a conscience, you know, someone who just um, doesn't seem to have any regret or any kind of, um, um, they just, there's no filter, there's no, nothing to stop some people from doing horrible things, right? So we would, we would say that those kind of people, from our viewpoint, have no conscience, right? But um, I found it really interesting just to um, read out the details of the definition of conscience. Again, an inner feeling or voice. So here, we're always talking about on my channel an inner voice, right? Um, and specifically how these different aspects of one's own self, one's own mind and heart or psyche, um, all of the mechanics inside of us that, that work together to, um, to give us um, perspective, to give us um, or to help us to... Um, use um, beliefs and form beliefs and to use logic and how all this works together to um, allow us to interact with this reality in our own unique way, right? We So in a lot of these myths and fairy tales and legends and all this, um, we talk a lot on my channel about the different aspects of the psyche being personified in those stories. And there's typically um, a guide, right? And so from the Christian viewpoint, that would be the Holy Spirit. So I thought this was really interesting because I had never viewed one's conscience in that manner. Um, and so not just knowing right from wrong, but this inner feeling or inner voice that acts as a guide. Okay. So, um, Again, this is not about struggling to be a good person because if, if you're a good person, you don't struggle to be a good person, right? <laughs> you're, you just, it's not that you're all good, right? I mean, we're, we're imperfect as human beings, all of us to varying degrees, but good as in you have good intentions and you're not a liar. You're not using people and abusing people and exploiting and, you know, things like that, right? So in other words, you're trying, you're trying to be the best person you can be, right? Um, so 
I'm not going to be talking about conscience in that manner, but instead conscience in the manner of the definition, in that it's supposed to work as that inner guidance, okay, that source inside of us that that tells us, you know, go go right or go left, okay. So, um, there was a, a little sign in. Um, I think it was Hobby Lobby a while back. I actually bought it and I've got it put up somewhere, but it was really cool. It just spoke to me and it said, she flies with her own wings. She flies with her own wings and it just felt, it just resonated with me, right? And um, later in my life, it clicked as to why. Um, It's very similar to um, the nursery rhyme, you know, row, row, row your boat, right? gently down the stream and then of course that's associated with the last part which is merrily 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 life is but a dream but see here's the thing when you're not the one rowing your boat it's not merrily happening down the stream (laughs) it's uh it's not peaceful it's very frustrating and so um Same thing when you're trying to fly with your own wings because God gave that to you, metaphorically speaking, right? God gave you your own conscience to act from, right? But yet, sometimes there are controlling individuals who want to replace that mechanism within us and to become um, our inner voice externalized so that we we become imprisoned in that manner. We we get to a, a position of being, you know, just frozen or petrified, you know, which is a trauma response to be frozen. Um, but it's, it's almost like you just turn to stone literally because you're so, you've been conditioned to such a, a high degree to look to this other person as, um, as your, your, your guide, you know? And so we're going to talk about that today. Um, hopefully it'll be just a little bit different of a spin from, you know, some of my past videos and, and sometimes it just takes just a little bit of turning around this way or that way to, um, to give you a new perspective and that will unlock just like a key. Sometimes that's all it takes to unlock a new, um, puzzle piece, a new, um, light bulb moment that will, um, help you to make sense of some things, you know, because I was watching uh, Barbara Frone. She's got a really awesome YouTube channel. Um, I'll link it in the description. She's very inspirational, just some short um, videos, Christian-based. But um, she was saying, I think it was earlier today, you know, the truth will set you free. And that's just it. When you're when you're searching for the truth and you're so driven and you're trying so hard, because again, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. You know, we're supposed to get wisdom. We're supposed to have that desire to want to know what's going on, you know. Um, and so when we're able to finally get a hold of and furthermore perceive or understand something, it truly is just another key to unlock just um, another layer of um, all these things that bind us up in this human experience, right? Um, so so let's dive into it a little bit. So the conscience, right? It's it's not, <laughs> it's essential. It's essential. It, it doesn't only matter, it's essential. So um, a controlling person, and this is seen a little more easily, I feel like, in um, when you can see the whole family dynamic of like an enmeshed family environment, it, and that's just kind of like one lens, and it's a little bit more elusive when it's one on one, like with a you know a spouse, or a friend, or a business partner, or a boss, a manager, or whatever you know. Um, but it's it's easier, in my opinion, to identify within this enmeshed family environment. But a controlling person, they like I said before, they want to be that guide for you. Okay, they want to replace your conscience and tell you what's right and what's wrong. Not so much in an ethical kind of way, but like um, how to do everything, you know. Um, They just want to be that voice of reason for you. Okay, they want to do the thinking for you because if you do your own thinking, now you're a threat 
see. We're going to talk about that too. So essentially what you experience when you're with someone like this or in a very enmeshed family dynamic where there's there's not really any borders or boundaries is it, it starts to feel like what's right for you is wrong for them. And what's right for them is wrong for you. It's almost like you're you're placed in this awful situation. Um, it's almost like I think they call it a catch twenty two, where um, you're if you do and you're if you don't. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like it doesn't matter what you do. It's it's not a win win situation. It's a lose lose situation. They place you in that position, and it's an awful position to be in. Um, and so it gets all mixed up. And see, they're in, going through this process right there that we just talked about. What happens is, it's a process or an experience over time that cultivates this poison, this psychological, spiritual, energetic poison that seeps into your very being, okay? Into your mind and your heart. And like I said, it binds you up. Okay, and the the problem here is that we don't consciously catch it. Okay, Um, specifically, we don't we're not able to identify it as self betrayal. Okay, because you you know what when you love a person, even if it's a friend or whatever it is, a family member, um, when you love someone, that that old saying, "Love is blind," it you know it's it's a saying for a reason. You know, it's it's been around a long time for a reason, and so you know we are struggling with self-betrayal but we don't we don't even realize it right so um but but essentially it's required self-betrayal is required by these people um and i think on some level we know this subconsciously unconsciously somewhere in the psyche in the recesses the dark recesses you know the dark the dark halls or corridors of our psyche somewhere in there we know that there's like this unspoken agreement that in order to to show our love and to be loved by this person that's what they expect of us they expect self-betrayal and I'm talking about wolves and sheep's clothing right all right so um and and what they're also doing I think it helps to you know use some of these terms um in the right way um to just put a new lens on our perspective to be able to see it in a new light but it's kind of like they're making us into martyrs if you think about it okay um through this process of self-betrayal because again they're wanting to replace what god put inside of us as an internal mechanism our own conscience they're wanting to us to deny that and to look out here to them to tell us what to do, right? Um, and so that's why I, I relate it to self-betrayal. That's why I relate it to um, being a martyr, right? Um, so, so the bigger issue becomes, especially after you've gotten away from someone like that, is that this conditioning over time, it becomes internalized and their voice becomes like this ghost-like influence, okay? It's like hard to identify. It's like you get away from them, you think you're good. <laughs> you might have a short period where you just kind of elevated in your mood and you, you, you're very hopeful and all this, but but then it's kind of like these these feelings of inner conflict start to creep back up like like this just you know, awful, gives you an awful feeling, but you can't put your finger on what's going on. But it's like this little, this little ghost has come back to haunt you or this zombie that you thought was, you know, dead and gone, this old bad situation, you know, putting off the old man and, or the, the awful situation that you left. You're like, that should be in my past, but yet now it's suddenly resurrected. (laughs) And, um, but we don't, we don't often see it. So I guess it's more like a, a ghost than a zombie, right? But, but it's like it just, um, that poison, you know, over time, it's kind of like it sat dormant. And then after we got out of the situation, it's kind of like it just, you know, works its magic and suddenly manifests um, in this manner, okay, to continue 
the process internally within us. And we're going to talk about that. Um, and it's, you know, it's like I said, it's, you can't identify it. It's, um, it's like invisible in our um, unconscious, subconscious, whatever. So, um, yes. So we can, we get to a point where we, <laughs> it's hard to act from our own conscience or free will or volition or intuition. I know they're not all exactly the same, not perfect parallels, but um, I think we can kind of see the relation, right? We struggle to act from, from all these without one of two things happening. Number one, without feeling guilty. It's like this automatic response within us where if there's, there's something that pops up, tabulates in our mind and we're like, oh, we need to go do this and take care of this or we ought to do this or that. It's not even just wants. It's just even needs. Anything that pops up, it's kind of like, Latched on to that is a feeling of guilt, but it's not always conscious. So you have to work at making the stuff conscious because all you're experiencing is being just a, a solid, you know, frozen statue on your couch and you can't move and you're like, why can't I move? You know, but you can look back and you're like, I used to, you know, um, just be very motivated and um and you're still ambitious in your heart and you still have dreams and ideas and all this stuff but there's times after coming out of these situations where you find yourself just really lacking motivation and um and there's no good excuses for why you're not doing all this stuff that's coming up in your mind and heart and um, i want to link another video in the description related to this from um um Chris, um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, um, but uh, Chris, essentially, and he's got a great channel too, so I'll, I'll drop a link to this video. It's one of his older videos that I saw today, but it's related to that. Um, he just approaches the topic um, from a place of understanding because he's been there and done that, and uh, a lot of compassion, and that's what you need. You need to be able to, um, to, to in my experience... To have someone who can look at you and say, I get it, because I've been through it. That in itself is very healing and supportive for your spirit, you know, as opposed to just walking into this, you know, sterile therapist's office, and they're just totally and only textbook, you know, trained. Now, there's some therapists who are amazing, but they've really poured their heart into their research, and it shows, um, like, I love Dr. Uh, Les Carter. Um, and he's got a channel on YouTube too, and some courses that you can take. Um, and I've taken his courses and they're great. In the past, they were a uh, part of my, um, my journey earlier and they really, really helped me. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, <laughs> you get stuck. <laughs> There was a huge tangent for you. <laughs> if you keep coming back to my channel, I'm, but, you know, I know that's no surprise for you. If you're new, I'm sorry. It's just if, if I feel this, you know, this um, calling to go down this rabbit hole and I'm, I'm going to do it because I think, well, um, I feel the calling for a reason. You know, maybe I need to share this. So that's why I share it. But, um, but that's what happens. There's this awful feeling that's stuck. <laughs> You know, to every kind of um, thought you have with regards to something you need to do, you want to do, you think you should do, whatever it is, there's this guilt attached. It's awful. And so, um, so what I was saying is you can no longer act from your own free will, um, conscience, volition, intuition without one of two things. Number one, without feeling guilty. And I, and I put, or number two, without feeling justified. Now, this is where we're going to start to do a deep dive. <laughs> we're going to zoom zoom in, and I hope you really um, get something from it. So, a controlling person essentially doesn't want us to live freely for any reason, okay? And we know this. I've come to understand it as we do know this on some level. Um, why? Why they don't want us to live and move freely Um at all it seems like why I don't know I, I can't tell you why I've and that's hard 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 because we want answers and they're not always there so which is why a lot of people who um 
excuse me, I've never been spiritual before, start to see this other layer to this human experience. You know, this kind of stuff, going through this kind of stuff, kind of makes it hard to deny, you know, demonic influence, just to put it, you know, blunt and and, and bold. So I, I speculated here in my notes, I put, maybe they feel irrelevant because their entire, their entire identity is hinging on their relationship to you, like as your spouse, as your parent, as your business partner or whatever. Or maybe they're afraid that you'll realize you don't need them. Um, and so it's like they, they place themselves in this position of serving as your conscience, as your guide. And if they see that you can act freely or move freely in your life without consulting them 24-7, then that, that causes fear within them and anxiety, um, which is ironic because this is kind of one of those things where, you know, in a healthy relationship, everything's reciprocal. You know, you, you, um, you support one another, um, and you give advice to one another and things like that. Right. But in other words, you don't need the other person in that regard to be the one who tells you what to do all the time. Right. So to me, this is the kind of thing that, you know, it could reveal someone's own, um, position, you know, internal position, and they're just projecting that onto you. They really are the ones that need you, but they're, um, they're trying to make themselves out as being the, uh, the one to coordinate your life for you, you know, see, to make it better. But the truth is you don't need that. And so if, you know, if you start to indicate signs that you don't need that, then they're, you know, it's like, oh God, because really they're the ones that need you for some reason. So just something to think about. I'm always trying to get the wheels turning. If this is your first video, then just know my goal. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm not a professional or a licensed. This is simply just, um, I guess you would call it a vlog um, based on my life experiences. And I hope to offer everyone um, my insights and my research and my personal experiences to some degree, right? Generalized to get the wheels turning. It's always my goal to get your wheels turning. So, um, <clears throat> And, and the other reason they may not want you moving freely is because, well, they may not want you to find out whatever they got, you know, they might want to literally be um, in a position to always know what you're doing. So they know you're not going to go over here and find out what they've got hidden. You know, I don't know. But, um, but you may also be um, being exploited because you're serving um, as part of their facade. In other words, you may be the only thing securing um their facade or possibly even their retirement plans and that's that's hard to think about something like that um but <clears throat> I could go off on a tangent there maybe I'll make a separate video on that but um so <clears throat> instead of zooming in on the whys and hows of the controller let's focus on where our power lies right with ourselves Okay, um, and I'm reminded of Stephen Covey, which I mentioned before. He's a um, or he was a great author, um, but he talked about in one of his books, you know, the circle of concern, which really is kind of like identifying um, what's within our control and what's outside of our control. Okay, um, and our our power lies on focusing on the things that are within um, our control, and the perspective or the lens you can use here to identify what is within our control is to think of it like what is within our concern, right? Um, because controllers blur those lines, see? So that's where you can start to really kind of critically think and say, hang on a second, that's something you can do for yourself. That's something I can do for myself. You know, you can start to draw those those boundaries or those lines within that enmeshed relationship or enmeshed family. Okay. So when we internalize these upside down mechanics that have been thrown, or I'm sorry, that have thrown our conscience off balance. Okay. We find it hard to do anything for ourselves. Because again, anything at all that we want to do, that we feel like we should do, we need to do, there's this parasite sort of attached to it of guilt. Okay? So, <clears throat> but again, it's, it's not conscious when you're going through it, typically. Typically. 
So instead of consciously being able to identify why we can't get going, it's like we aren't sure. So we just wind up blaming ourselves for our our times of where we have we're lacking motivation. And then that blaming that self blame, that self conviction just adds to <laughs> um you know, the the feeling of being frozen and stuck, right? So, um yes. <clears throat> so earlier I mentioned um two things happening that keep us from moving freely and unrestrained from the controller in our life. Number one, feeling guilty which is a control tactic on their part. Number two, feeling justified. I want to explain that second part. So if we don't want to upset this person, this controlling person, we won't do whatever this is that's calling to us, right? We're going to deny that that internal voice, that guide inside. However, if the desire is strong enough to follow whatever our gut is telling us, it's kind of like, To offset the guilt, we have to feel justified in our actions because we know that this person is going to act upset or disappointed or condescending or something. There's going to be some kind of negative consequence, right? So it's not by our choice to upset them, but we just internalize that dynamic that if we do X, Y, Z, there's going to be this friction, So suddenly, there's an association sometimes, not so much with feeling guilty. Sometimes, yes, but we don't know why, and so that kind of gets blurry and foggy. But there's also this association with every time we try to do something, there's going to be friction. Every time we try to put our foot forward, take one step forward, we're going to have to take two steps back because there's this friction, right? And again, remember, love is blind, so sometimes we can't figure out where it's coming from, that it's coming from this person and their conditioning, especially if it's in the past. You know, we've left them behind, and then it's just us, and we're blaming ourselves. See, we can't identify that that conditioning created, again, this, this internalization of the conditioning, which is like this ghost, sabotaging the function of our internal guiding light. So this unconscious correlation is born, okay? That acting from our own inner compass equates to resistance in the outer world. It creates this paradigm, and sometimes it's not, we're not even aware of it, okay? But it's a paradigm of struggle as a way of life, okay? Like expecting pushback. And what happens is when we start to act that way, when we, you know, we are free, when we finally get free from this, you know, um, controlling, um, dominating parent or spouse or group or whatever, and then we're free, it's kind of like everything we do can feel like a struggle, but we don't know why. And then what happens is it can become self-fulfilling, because let me share let me share why if you're operating from this unconscious paradigm that there's going to be friction with everything you do from the outside looking in if you have this observer out here looking in on you right you're on display someone just has you know the privilege of uh, viewing your life right from afar how would this look to them we might come across as inconsiderate or rigid or brash or um, is it reactional, reactionary, um, just very driven, um, uh, you know, just kind of like um, sharp, you know, I don't mean like this, but like personality wise. And so, and those are just mild examples, you know, I mean, um, it can cause a person to, to just really embrace this mindset. You might call it a victim mindset, but that, that kind of manifests, I feel like more in a, a position where you're just totally deflated. I'm talking about someone who's moving forward, but, but there's this unconscious correlation between moving forward and struggle. And so there's friction and cause you expect, um, pushback from from, I don't know what, say, because it's just all here. Um, 
And so it can become self-fulfilling because the energy you're putting out into the world or into the moment or whatever is harsh. It's kind of like you're, you're coming at life moment to moment from a position of being defensive because you feel like you have to defend every single thing you do and you don't. You don't. And then you feel guilty. You're coming off defensive and sharp and harsh. And people may react to you that way. But yet you're thinking, I'm just wanting to I'm just wanting to go to the thrift shop for an hour. But if you were made to believe for ten years that that was selfish and a bad thing, then you're gonna project that energy when you're like, Hey, I'm going to the thrift shop and you know, someone who hadn't had this conditioning may be like, Hey, I'm going to thrift to the thrift shop for an hour. But if you've had that kind of conditioning, you're gonna be like, I'm going to the thrift shop for an hour. It's just an hour. I'll I'll be back. I, I you know, you know, you might come off like that. And then whoever you're with is gonna be like, Okay. Oh no. And then when you're out in traffic, you know, you're going to be charged and you see what I'm saying? So it can actually turn into this self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, and it's not your fault. It's just a matter of becoming conscious of these, these things, these mechanisms, these, um, these ghosts from your past, um, your past conditioning that have infiltrated, um, all of the pathways, um, and, and holes of your mind and heart. So it's just a matter of becoming conscious, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> I put inside unconsciously, it becomes, we, we almost kind of go over the top, you know, because we're in defense mode sometimes um, unconsciously. And it's kind of like we're not just going to go do this. We're not just going to go to the thrift shop. We're going to go with bells on. <laughs> so it's like huh, this intensity <laughs> attached to it you know I love all those old sayings it's really interesting I went on a, um, a tour one time in um, St. Augustine uh, Florida and it was just um, really interesting because it was an old historical town and they um, uh, part of it was like a little ghost tour you know the graveyard and um, just the history it was really rich and really cool and um, on the tour they were explaining um, the origins of some of these old sayings and so maybe we'll do a show about that it was really cool but anyway with bells on that just came to me earlier but we associate what should freely belong to us as costly instead Someone who hasn't gone through this kind of experience is just going to be acting from their conscious. Normally, they don't feel like they have to justify or explain themselves. It's just, you know, it'll just flow. But if you've been through that, um, you're in defense mode. Um, and, and we feel like there's a cost. Because again, when you love someone, you don't want to upset them. But if they're upset, if they're a controlling person saying you haven't identified them as such... If they're acting like they're really upset with you just for normal stuff in life, then, you know, you you feel like going and doing normal stuff in life is going to cost you. It's going to cost you their love. And so you associate everything that you need and want to do as being costly in that manner. So it's just a big mess. I hope that this is kind of starting to, you know, unlock some keys, get the wheels turning for you. So... You know, we can either shut down or we can make the decision to move forward feeling this huge cost in our mind and heart. And this might manifest as our trying to reconcile this cost to the same degree of how bad this person is or how bad the world is. So your degree of defensiveness may depend on the degree of this concept of what it costs you, you know. It's all unconscious. Um... And, and I just want to say this too. This is why if an outside person were to view one or two instances of your, cl- your class, I was going to say your life and your class. <laughs> it's, it's going to come out like class. I don't even know if that's a word. Hopefully it's not a bad word. <laughs> but, but this is why if an outside person were to view one or, one or two um, of these situations like in your life up close and they see 
your reaction or your decision to act independent of what this person you love wants you to do, um, it, it might come across to this outside person like you're overreacting, right? So, um, but they don't know about your past. They don't know of all the hundreds of experiences you have stored in your memory bank, you know, and all this, right? Um, and so my point here is that um, it may have required in your mind and heart somewhere an overreaction uh, to feel justified in doing what is freely granted to others. Does that make sense? It's kind of like just just living defensively, I guess. But, um, yeah, so what is freely granted to others? Let me give you some examples. In a healthy environment, atmosphere, family, relationship, whatever, you can speak your mind honestly, genuinely, um, without having people roll their eyes or being patronizing to you, see? So when it's, it's received and you know there's love there through actions, then you feel free to do that. No big deal. Um, but if you've been met, everything you've tried to put forth has been met with condescension and patronizing and big eye rolls and all this stuff, then you, it, it conditions you to feel like you have to really get your point across or either just totally shut down or, you know, whatever. So you're, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to affect your personality, especially if it was during your, um, your formative years, you know, growing up. Um, you may be a lot more reserved or, very much introverted because you have learned that sharing your personal details means they're going to be exploited. And so I'm talking about things that are freely granted to others, you know, and are free expression. You, you can't do that when you're under the influence of a controller, right? But basically, you feel it's like you have to suit up for battle. Um, because it's like you're you're not even comfortable in your own skin when you're living with a controlling person. So um, even just taking time for yourself to read or nap or just even just to be yourself can feel like you have to justify that and defend that. And that creates this defensive energy within you, which is really friction because... That's why you have to get back in touch with that inner guiding light to resolve it once and for all. That's where your peace is at. So, um, I mean, people, a lot, I think a lot of people, I don't want to say all and state an absolute, but um, I feel like a lot of people don't understand the um, extremes that some of these people, psychological abusers will go to, even to the point of sleep deprivation for years on end. And that affects you. All kind of stuff. All kind of stuff um, that, you know, just know that um, I, it's hard to be surrounded by people who don't know and who, or who don't believe you if you do try to share some of your story. I just want you to know that you aren't alone and there are people in the world who have been through similar situations and get you in that manner. So please don't um, deny what you've been through yourself, you know, and it just takes work to get to that place. But um, again, the majority of people will never will never understand. And we have to make peace with that in our heart and just understand it's just we shouldn't expect it. You know what I mean? Um, yes. So and it, it does. It feels awful when you're. <sighs> When you're a loving person, you you know you, you you're not a liar, and you don't want to you know uh, use people or you, does it make you happy to upset people or you know you're not you don't have a bully kind of mindset and you're an empathetic person. All this stuff it's hard. It feels awful when you finally put your foot down with someone you love. It's not easy. Um. But yeah, you can get to the point, you know, to varying degrees, 
different people and situations and stuff, but it's a spectrum. But you can get to a point where it just kind of feels like the world's against you. I think for a lot of us, that, that feeling kind of comes and goes. You know, we can have bad days where it feels like everything's going wrong and everything we try to do is met with resistance. And But I just want to try and get you to be able to identify any of these old roots that we need to pull up, like we're weeding our the garden of our mind and heart and the remnants of that old conditioning, and I want to get rid of it, you know. Well, you know, I don't want us to continue to approach life from um, some ghost-like paradigm that the world's against us, because again, that can become self, self-fulfilling, right? So, It was, this experience in our past was a catch-22 from the start, right? Because unknowingly, we did relinquish our own property out of love, okay? Property meaning our our inner guiding light or our, our conscience as defined earlier in the video, right? We did it to appease someone who we thought loved us. But see, that's not love. It's not. Um, Someone who loves you will never want you to give up what God gave to you, what God gives to each one of us, see. So you might even consider it like a telephone line, which feels archaic at this point. (laughs) It's so old. (laughs) Like, um, you know, um, telephones with cords should be in a museum at this point. I don't know. It just feels so old. But um, it feels like, when I was reading the definition of conscience that I shared with you all, it felt like, um, metaphorically, it was like a telephone line that's direct, going direct to God's promptings, right? Like the Holy Spirit, our intuition. So I just want to say this to you. Don't be hard on yourself if you have reacted defensively, just trying to justify what comes, what is allowed to others, you know, freely, um, the others, the things others don't have to ask permission for in life. You know, if you've approached life from that defensive manner and you feel weird about just having this, um, aggressive energy, this, um, defensive energy, harshness, you know, you've been prickly or whatever it is. Um, just remember, give yourself some grace because, um, the defense is, um, understandable, We just want to kind of just reel it back in, you know, just make sure we have the reins of our minds and hearts um, and so that we can maintain peace. But the thing is, you weren't only defending yourself, see, and this brought me a lot of peace. Without even realizing it, you were also defending God's design because God put that personal inner guiding light inside of each inside of each of us and it was never meant to be laid down for another person to take its place see so you were fighting the good fight in your mind and heart even without knowing it so i thank you so much for coming along to hear the message i hope it was valuable for you i hope it got the the wheels turning i hope that it unlocked some um aha moments for you, helped you connect some dots. And I just thank you so much for coming along to hear it. I hope that you have a beautiful day and I'll see you again very soon.